Welcome to KetoMealsAndRecipes.com. Today I'm sharing with you one of my husband's favorite cookies, my chocolate mocha shortbread cookies. As with all of my recipes, if you're new to my channel, you may not know, but all of my recipes are sugar-free, gluten-free, and of course, keto. I'd also like to say that these chocolate shortbread cookies are not the same as my traditional Scottish shortbread. The recipe's a bit different, so if you want a more classic recipe, please check that one out. One of the things that I really like about this recipe is that they're a great prep ahead recipe, which you can make the dough and freeze well ahead of time so that you have them handy anytime that you have a craving or when you want to serve a treat to your family or friends. I also would like to ask that you watch all the way through the video right to the end because I will explain two different methods of how to make these cookies as well, two different ways of freezing and then thawing your cookies as a prep ahead recipe. If you're a chocolate lover, you're going to absolutely love these chocolate mocha shortbread cookies because they have a really rich, amazing chocolate flavor. And these are not a super sweet cookie. It's more of a semi-sweet and dark chocolate flavor. In order that you can decide how many cookies you can enjoy, here are the macronutrient ratio for the chocolate mocha shortbread cookies, which is 4.8 to 1, with 2.4 grams of total carbs, 1.5 grams of dietary fiber, resulting in 0.9 grams of net carbs per cookie. At this point, I usually tell you to preheat the oven, but don't do that just yet because you have to pre-chill these cookies and you'll be wasting your energy if you preheated now. But when it's time to preheat, set your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius. The first method of making these cookies is the easiest. It's to make cookie wedges. And for the wedges, you should also prep ahead by also greasing the sides and bottom of the flan pan and also putting a piece of parchment on the bottom of this pan and then just set the pan aside. To make the cookie dough, begin by putting the butter into your mixing bowl. If you're using a stand mixer as I am, use your paddle attachment and whip the butter to a pale yellow stage. Add your confectionery sweetener and whip at low speed until it's well combined. Because butter likes to stick to the sides of the pan, make sure that you stop and scrape the bowl once in a while. Now place a fine mesh sieve over your mixing bowl and add the almond flour, the lupin flour, or you can substitute with coconut flour, the Dutch processed cocoa powder, and a good quality instant espresso or strong coffee. And of course, your finely ground salt. The glucomannan, which is also known as konjac root powder. Then stir all of these ingredients to help it pass through the sieve. I find that using my hands often works the best, but you can also use a spatula. Then using your paddle, mix again at low speed until everything is well combined. And don't forget to scrape down the sides and the bottom of your bowl so that all the ingredients are well integrated. At this point, you have two options on how to make the cookies. For option one, which is the wedges, get your prepared pan and transfer the cookie dough into it. Then with your offset spatula, spread out the cookie dough so that it's even and the same thickness all the way throughout. And lastly, smooth the surface. This, of course, is the easiest method. I'd also like to mention that regardless whether you're using option one, the wedges, or the option two, which is the cookie cutouts, to make these cookies, place them into the middle position of your preheated oven and bake for 10 to 15 minutes. Now to continue with the wedges. When the cookies are done, remove the pan from the oven. While the cookies are still warm, cut them into wedges as I'm showing here. Try your best to make each of the wedges about the same size. Then let everything cool in the pan until the cookies are at room temperature. You can serve the wedges as is, but I like to finish the wedges by taking my small sieve and use the sweetener I ground to confectioner powder and just lightly dust the surface of the cookies. Because this pan has a lift bottom, and if you've used a pan like mine that has a movable bottom, just lift the cookies out of the pan. And I like to recut my cookies just to make sure that they'll come apart nicely. And then all you have to do is serve and plate them. And of course, enjoy. <laughs> now for option two, in which I'm going to use my cookie cutout shapes. The first step for this method is to transfer the dough onto a sheet of cling wrap. Then flatten the dough a bit by using a rolling pin to get it nice and even. I do this because the flatter dough will chill faster 
and it will make the next step much easier. Then use the cling wrap to seal it, put it onto a tray, and refrigerate for about two hours. You want the dough really nice and cold because this will puff up and expand too much if it's not chilled properly. When you know that your dough is nice and chilled, remove it from the fridge and place between two sheets of parchment or as I'm doing and use your cling wrap. And again, using your rolling pin, roll out the cookie dough a bit more so that the dough is a little bit less wide than your rolling pin. Now here's a technique that I like when I'm making cutout cookies. And if you've watched my sugar cookie video, you'll be familiar with this. Because in the sugar cookie video, I demonstrate the idea of using either painter sticks or chopsticks as guides to ensure that when I'm rolling out the dough, it becomes a nice even thickness. Because an even thickness for all of your cookies is really important so that they all bake at about the same rate. Now just use your rolling pin to even out the thickness to about one quarter inch or about one half centimeter thick. You should work fairly quickly at this stage because you want your cookie dough to remain cold. Now use the cookie cutout of your choice. In today's video, I'll be making heart shapes and press out the cookie shapes. While you're making the cookie cutouts, try to place them as close to each other as possible. Having done that, when you're ready to transfer the shapes onto your parchment lined cookie sheet, begin by first removing the scrap dough that's around the closest cutout. That makes it much easier to remove the cookie shape, which you can do by using a spatula or a knife, or as I'm doing, by carefully using my hands to peel and remove each cutout from the parchment. And just repeat until you've done all of that. All your scrap cookie dough can be re-rolled, flattened, chilled again, and then used to make more cutouts. And now that I have transferred the cutout shapes onto my parchment lined cooking sheet, as you can see, my tray is quite full. I'm going to put the entire tray into the refrigerator for a couple hours. This second chill is really important when you're making cutouts and making sugar cookies or butter cookies of any kind. And chilling is extremely important with this particular recipe of chocolate mocha shortbread cookies because it has so much butter and if you don't chill them really well your cookies will expand when you're baking and they'll lose their shape. This is one of the big differences between option one and option two. You don't have to chill the dough when you're making wedges but you do have to chill when you're using cutouts. And about 10 minutes before you're ready to bake, preheat your oven. When your cookie dough is very chilled, place the sheet of cookies into the middle position of your oven and bake for about 10 minutes. And then remove the tray from the oven. I forgot to mention that once you've taken your tray out of the oven, let the cookies cool in the pan for about 10 minutes and then transfer them to a wire rack to cool to room temperature. These cookie cutouts can be served as is and they are delicious. However, if you'd like to decorate them for a special occasion or just because you like them that way, here are two simple ways. To avoid any misinterpretation of my recipe, I'd like to mention that I did not include the extra sweetener or the chocolate dip in my macro calculation. As I've mentioned for my wedges, the simplest way to decorate the cookies is to use your sweetener which you ground to a confectionery powder. Alternatively, Another way that my husband really likes his cookies is to have them chocolate dipped. Making the chocolate dip is really easy. All you have to do is get your unsweetened chocolate and a bit of butter. And I know there's a lot of different ganache recipes, but I have found that using two parts chocolate to one part butter works really well. And uh, as I said, I'm not adding any sweetener to this chocolate because I want that rich dark chocolate flavor to complement the cookie. But if you find that the dipping chocolate is too bitter for you, just add a little bit of sweetener. And the time to dip these cookies is when they're completely cooled and at room temperature. To make them look a little bit fancier and more of a bakery sort of look, I'd suggest you only dip about half of your cookie. I have to admit, I do like the way they look with this half and half method. And the last little tip on decorating, especially for occasions like Christmas, New Year's, or Valentine's, birthday, whatever, is if you have gold sprinkles or silver sprinkles, use them at this point to sprinkle them on the wet chocolate. By dusting with the sprinkles on the wet chocolate, they will stick really well. And the last thing I'd like to explain is how to store these chocolate shortbread cookies. To store the chocolate mocha shortbread cookies, place them in a container and keep them in your fridge and they'll stay there very nicely for several days. Alternatively, there are two ways you can freeze them for prep ahead. First, Make the cookie dough, wrap it really well in cling wrap, 
roll it into a log, then place this log of dough, and then place it into a freezer baggie, and of course label it. Or alternatively, you can prepare the cookie dough, roll it out and cut out the shapes as I did in option two, and place these shapes into an airtight freezer safe container. By freezing the cookie dough, this will last for several months. To thaw my cookie dough, I place the frozen dough into my fridge and leave it to thaw slowly overnight. And after you have baked your prep ahead cookies, you can decorate them by dusting them with the confectioner powder or dipping them into chocolate. After baking and the cookies are cooled and decorated as you choose, place them on a platter and they're ready to serve. I hope that you have found this recipe and explanation useful. If you have and you haven't done so already, I would be really honored if you would subscribe, turn on your notification bell, give me a like, and share this recipe with someone that you think might also like this recipe. And I love hearing from you, so leave me a comment. Thank you very much for watching my video, and please come back when I post my next video. Until next time, cheers!